Hey, what's up, everyone? Gamer Guide here, and uh, I wanted to talk about the Sonic games. Yes, the Sonic. It's obvious now that Sega is making these Sonic games on a budget, and it's a very, very low budget. I first noticed that 2017 when Sonic Forces was sold for just forty dollars. That's the price of a handheld game on the 3DS. And at first, I was like, "Well, I just saved myself twenty bucks." But after that, and now with Team Sonic Racing, that's also forty bucks. Usually racing games like that are at least $50. And uh, I mean, we got Super Mario Maker 2 coming out, and that's $60. So I wanted to explain to you guys who are wondering why is that, and does that mean games are getting bad? Not necessarily. After all, the reviews, the early reviews for Team Sonic Racing are coming in, and it's a solid B. It's just what I predicted. I know a lot of you guys wanted me to make a follow-up to that video last year when I said that Sonic, uh, Team Sonic Racing looks disappointing. I didn't mean it was going to be bad. I just meant compared to the uh, Sega All-Stars games like Transformed, it was going to be a bit disappointing. And um, honestly, Sumo Digital were on a budget. Like even the early reviews say that it was on a budget, but they really made the best out of it. They they did their best. They really did the best they could for what they had. And um, the reviews I'm getting, I'm seeing a lot of 8.5s, 8s. You know, IGN gave it 8.5. Game explains that they liked it a lot. They said they didn't like it more than Transformed, but they still liked it. Even this one early review said, uh, The main criticism we can throw at Team Sonic Racing isn't really its fault. It's fairly clear it's been developed with a limited budget, and while Sumo Digital has made a great effort, it does feel a little limited. The visuals are nice, but nothing outstanding. Performance is mostly smooth, but dips when things get hectic, and modes are play and pretty basic. There are some alternative, objective-based events in the story mode, but there's no way to play them outside of this. But it's a very, very good game. I knew Sumo Digital was going to do the best they could for what they had, but it's like, is that all we're going to just settle with Sonic games? They're just going to be good. They did pretty good for what they had. We're never going to get that great masterpiece like Mario Odyssey, the Galaxy games, or like Sonic Generations, or like previous Sonic games. So I'm going to explain why why is this and when did this start. Okay, let's go back 11 years ago to Sonic Unleashed. Now, you know, many people have different opinions on Sonic Unleashed. Some people call it garbage. Some people say it's not that good like me. And other people say it's a masterpiece. Now, if there was something that was masterful about Unleashed was the presentation, was the production of it. It was very, very ambitious. I heard from a lot of people like Brain Scratch Comms that Sega really pulled out all the stops for that game because they thought it would be their last Sonic game. So it was very ambitious. I mean, you had movie quality cutscenes. You had the knife stages. You had all these other gameplay styles, all these, you know, side missions, the hub worlds, the hot dog missions, whether it was good or bad. The thing is, it was a lot. The game was jam packed too much for its own good that it actually affected the game and the game got terrible reviews. I mean some people at IGN were even giving Unleashed a lower score than 06 which is just stupid. So ever since then I think Sega realized, the Sonic team realized, you know what, we should just downscale these games a bit. Like short and sweet is better than long and drawn out. And um, I mean the greatest Sonic games back then were not that long. Sonic 3 and Knuckles is a masterpiece, it's the GOAT. You know, and that game isn't long at all. You can beat the game in about two hours. To play everything, it's about two to three hour game. You know? And even Sonic Adventure games, it's not that long. I mean, someone who's really good, like a veteran, can beat that game in less than three hours. Or something like that, you know? So, you don't need to make games super long. That's not what Sonic is all about. Mario, the reason why Mario is so long is because it's replayability and bonus levels. The levels in Mario games are pretty short, like look at 3D World for example, or even the Odyssey games. It's how you play it that gives longevity. So they started going with that attitude, and then comes uh, Sonic Colors. Now Sonic Colors is on the Wii, so I'm going to kind of disregard that because Nintendo Wii was a 480p low tier system. So they did the best for that game, and but the game was, was short. That was the first thing I noticed. It was very straight to the point. There were no hub worlds, it just went straight to the point. Sonic Team started focusing more on the gameplay than anything else. The story was just a throwaway, you know, cheesy comedy uh, thing. But um, the gameplay was what they focused on. And it helped because the game got much higher reviews. Then comes Sonic Generations, which is my top five Sonic games. The gameplay was outstanding. They really used up all their resources for the gameplay. The level design was peak. The gameplay was superior. It perfected the boost gameplay. It peaked, actually. 
But everything else was kind of lacking, to be honest. The story was non-existent. Colors had more of a story than Generations. But the thing with Generations is that we noticed a lot of things got cut in the story. The missions were good. Like, there were a lot of extra... Like, there's 90 missions in total. But you can beat the game in about two hours. You know, like two to three hours. It's not a long game at all. And um, there's no DLC. You know, Unleashed had plethora of DLC, but Generations didn't. The only DLC they had was that casino night, spin, I mean, pinball stage, and that's nothing really. So, you know, uh, th this is when Sonic Team started downscaling on things. But Generation, but the gameplay was still good, was still top tier. They were still focusing on the gameplay, just everything else was being sacrificed, which some people hated, some people were okay with it. I'm kind of meh about it. I mean, I would love a Sonic game with a great real life cinematic story, but if I had to choose between that and gameplay, I'll always go with gameplay. Then comes Sonic Lost World 2013. Now that game was also good. It had a lot of DLC though. It had uh, about three DLC stages, very fun. My favorite was the Zelda stage. But um, the game didn't sell well because the Nintendo Wii U was a bad system. It, the Nintendo Wii U didn't sell well at all. So of course, Sonic would be the one to suffer the most because it's a third party game. 3D World made its money back. It sold over a million uh, copies. But Lost World did not. So Lost World still made good money, but nothing compared to Colors or Generations. So, so that suffered. Now, this is when Sega took a huge hit. Sonic Boom. Now, I don't need to get into the whole, you know, politics and the whole drama behind Sonic Boom. But you guys already know the drill. Big Red Button, which were formed of uh, ex-team members, developers of Naughty Dog, who make great games like Sly, or um, not Sly, Crash Bandicoot, uh, Ratchet, and, not Ratchet and Clank. What's that other game? Jack and Daxter and all that? They were tasked to make Sonic Boom at the first time, I mean, before it was called Sonic Synergy. And it was made on the Cry Engine, which was a very expensive engine. The game looked really good, but with the stupid ass deal Sega had with Nintendo, they were like, oh, nope, big red button. You gotta make this game compatible with the Wii U, because we have the deal with Nintendo, it has to go on the Wii U. And Cry Engine was not made for the Wii U. So they had to basically retroactively just make it work on the Wii U. And that's why it was doing so bad on the Wii U. The graphics were terrible. It had a lot of skips, a lot of stuttering. It looked like shit. The glitches, like the, the, the infinite knuckles jump. I mean, the game was so bad. Not only did it get terrible reviews, but it sold the worst. I think it only sold a couple hundred thousand. Like, it is the worst selling Sonic game ever. Like, people didn't even buy it just for shits and giggles like Sonic 06. Nobody bought it. It came out around the same time as a TV show. So, people were like, just watch a TV show, fuck the game. So, the game really suffered. And I think that's when Sega and Sonic Team, not Sonic Team, but Sega, really took a hit. Because I remember around that time, 2014, 2015, it was 2015 that they filed for bankruptcy. Because they lost a lot of money with that game. I mean, they didn't get any of that in return because nobody bought it. I'm sure they made their money with Sonic Boom, but even then, I'm sure it couldn't last. That's why we don't have Sonic Boom anymore. That's why the show got canceled. It didn't get canceled because of low ratings. It got canceled because they didn't have enough money to continue the show, you know? Or I don't know if it was due to ratings or whatever, but many people love Sonic Boom, especially a lot of people who are just now discovering it, and they love the, the later seasons when it started breaking the fourth wall, but it only lasted for two seasons. But that's it. Ever since after Sonic Boom, I really noticed a decline in Sonic and Sonic Team and Sega. Just the way they went about things were just so low budget. I mean, uh, I'm not going to talk about the mobile games. Like they started becoming money hungry too, for all the wrong reasons. Like the red rings, the whole uh, red ring roulette or whatever from uh, Sonic Runners. Just a lot of the things they did started to seem really scummy. Like oh, like for instance, Sonic Forces. You can buy Super Sonic for like what five dollars at the time and it was because of the fan outrage they were like okay okay we'll go back we'll make it free again but it started making me think why is sega starting to be scummy why are they starting to act scummy with the way they do things with money they'll charge you for things they didn't charge before it's because they're losing money so they have to make the money back somehow right so then we get sonic mania and sonic forces you know sonic mania is the only game that benefits from this low budget because i mean it's a classic style sonic game you know, for all we know, the money could have been the most money. The budget Sonic Mania had could have been even more than the classic Sonic games had, you know? I mean, after all, Sonic 3 and Knuckles was split because of the budget, budgeting, and because it was too much space to take up. 
But Mania was a great game, obviously. Christian Whitehead did the best he could. I, I think their budget was just fine. It's a 2D game. It's not much. It only costs like $20. But then we get Sonic Forces, and a lot of it, like, that game was a hugely disappointing game. I hated it. Many of the things they promoted in the trailers, like Chaos, Zavik, and all that, they weren't in the game. They weren't satisfying in the game. Chaos wasn't in the game. So, I mean... The game was a huge letdown. Many things were cut, many things were abridged. The, the levels were too short. Everything just seemed gimped. And it was because of the low budget. Only cost $40, so that's the best a $40 game could do. Like, Sonic Forces would have been better as a handheld game, to be honest. But um, yeah, and now we're hearing about Sonic Team is no longer. They kind of absolved their reshuffling and stuff. So, I mean, they're really losing money. So now we get Team Sonic Racing, and that's also a $40 game, low budget. And now I'm hearing that there's going to be a new Sonic game announced for E3. I'm not sure if uh, it's going to be a brand new Sonic game, but I really do think it's going to be another low budget game. I'm not going to have my hopes high for that game, you know, because Sonic, Sonic Team or Sega in general has become low budget when it comes to Sonic games. I don't know if they're the same way with other franchises, but they are with Sonic. And... It's very saddening to see a franchise you love just become low budget. I mean, sure, it can work for spinoffs like Team Sonic Racing, but for the main AAA titles, that shit shouldn't be low budget. So what do you guys think about this? I think the, the only solution Sega has at this point is to remake the adventure games. Because you can do that on a lower budget, kind of. You can outsource it to another company like Sumo Digital. They can do the best they can with that. I don't think you need a very high budget to remake Sonic Adventure 1 because you're just remaking something that already existed. It's not like you're making a brand new game or quote unquote brand new experience like Sonic Forces. So I think they should remake Sonic Adventure 1. They do that, they're gonna make so much money back. So then the next new Sonic game they make, it can be high budget again. But that's my solution for that. What do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments below. Right guys, I'm done for now, so take care. And until next time, swag out.